Washington because that's what really matters and that's what helps them move government forward, the real issues for real people. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Congresswoman Dingell to talk a little bit about equal pay and, um, and then she'll open it up and then we'll go on to paid family leave and then on to women's health and reproductive rights. Jackie, let me say something. We want to get your stories. That's what we're thinking about. We like to take stories back. Yeah, we'd actually like to listen more than talk. Yeah. Um, and then answer any questions you guys have also. Okay, kick it off there. Well, so I'm going to be very brief uh, built on that. But um, I had, <coughs> I've started at General Motors uh, in the 70s out of school. And I did do other, I did public affairs, I did, but I was married to somebody that was in the Congress. So I've been married for 35 years, so I've always kept this wall. That's why I'm so super um, caring about the subject. But when I started at General Motors, the man that interviewed me said, why would a woman want to work at General Motors? And I really worked at one of the companies that, or industries that's really been one of the most difficult for women, although Mary Barra and I, uh, we're very close friends at General Motors, and she's now CEO of GM, but there still continues to, as we all know, be a significant pay disparity in this country between what men and women get paid. And I I'm really happy to see the generations in this room because I've got more stories, and it used to be as a, as a younger woman that instead of women supporting each other, we felt that if a, one woman did well, it hurt us. And we've never realized the importance of the women's network. And I think there's, I, I want to hear as we're all talking to you a lot of what these women's issues mean. And I think a lot of younger women don't understand that we, there still is a pay disparity in the workforce. And even issues like sexual harassment, which when I'm looking at some people who've had, so I could just tell by the, you know, when I, I was younger, I had a man who stalked me. And when I, I got told, hey, you got to live with it, upper, uh, upper management likes him, live with it for me. So, you know, there's a lot of things as women that we've got to address, and it's still not fair that there is such, seven, we make 77, well, it depends which state you're on, but, it, in, but there is a, that wage disparity. And it's not right. We should have equal pay for equal work. And we want to hear your stories about women supporting each other. So, why not? So well, let's, let's get through all of our thing and then open it up, okay? okay. So I, I've got uh, paid family leave. She's very bossy. Assigned. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's a winner. You know, these guys are women lead. They're co-chair of women lead. I'm red to blue. So, um, but, but um, we have a, an agenda that we, our phrase that goes with it is, when women succeed, America succeeds. That's right. Um, and as part of our legislative agenda, we have what Debbie just talked about, equal pay for equal work. We have what Lois will be talking about. I mean, what we stand for to our core is making sure that women, their um, access to reproductive rights is not hindered in any way. So thanks to the NARAL folks for being here. I don't know if we have any Planned Parenthood people sitting around the table either, but you know, to our core, um, it is just, that's so, so important to us. But, for paid family leave, I mean, we have a legislative uh, policy that's part of that overall agenda. Um, and we just happen to think that these issues that we're talking about here today should be front burner issues and not back burner issues. And so why Debbie is traveling here from Michigan, Lois from Florida, and I from Illinois is because we need more women in Congress to make sure not only do we have these uh, pieces of legislation as part of our agenda, but that we can pass these. And you are going to be faced with your top, at least your top three positions on your ballot are going to be all women. Mm -hmm. you, your U.S. Senate candidate, your president, and your congresswoman. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, right. Teresa, past that. If, if my we'll my whole ballot's all women. <laughs> okay. So, it's year of the woman in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. And in, and, and in my district, the top four positions on the ballot are all women. And, and that's historic. That's, that's absolutely historic. And why that matters is, again, because these issues that we're talking about today will become front burner issues if we have more women in Congress um, as President of the United States, as U.S. Senators, and some of these down ballot um, measures. So um, more than anything, we travel here because we know Jackie can win the seat. We want her to win the seat. We want her to be our colleague so we can make some progress on these very, very important issues that all of you hold sacred. All right, and then we can talk about